Hi everyone, thanks for joining us today. We have a fun program for you over container gardening for every season. My name is Cassie Homan. I'm the horticulture agent for the Post Rock District of K-State Research and Extension, and I'm here with Palace. Yeah, my name's Paula Schnitker. I'm also a horticulture agent in the Golden Prairie District. And like Cassie said, we're going to be talking about container gardening. So first, why would you pick a container? Uh, they're really often used for framing uh, or accenting entryways or stairwells or used in areas that you couldn't have um, other plants around, like on a patio. It, they're also good for adding green to a space or if you don't have a lot of area to garden in it's really easy to pop something in and they can be easily moved or changed out. So the first step is to pick your container and there's some things you should consider. The first thing is the size and shape of the container. Also the material that the container is made out of. Uh, maybe even the color of your container. If you're going to have just one single container or if it'll be a group of multiple ones. Um, and then the key thing to remember is drainage. So when it comes to containers, we like to say that bigger is better. Um, if you have a big pot, you're going to be able to fill it with more soil and have better plant growth. You'll have more room for the roots to grow. Um, and then the material is also important to think about. Some will dry out quicker than others. Um, but again, the main thing to remember is to have drainage. If you don't have drainage holes in the bottom of your container, you can literally drown the roots of your plant. So make sure you have holes in the bottom of your um, pot. But the last thing to remember is um, just be creative. You can have endless options. Um, anything will work as long as your plant will fit in it and um, the water will drain. Before you put those pretty plants in the containers that you picked out, you want to choose a quality potting media. And notice that I didn't say soil. Uh, you want to make sure you pick out a mix that's soilless. That will ensure that you're starting out with a sterile, weed-free, and disease-free media. Uh, these mixes often include pea or bark, uh, other things like per perlite or vermiculite. You can find products uh, from any big box store like Home Depot or Walmart. Uh, some of the garden centers that you go to also might fill up your containers if you bring them with you. Uh, don't use any fillers at the bottom of your pot. Make sure you fill the entire container with potting media. This will ensure that your roots have as much area as they can to grow. And the only other thing that's really important is to make sure that you leave a two to four inch lip at the top so that water won't spill over the sides once you do put your plants inside. So when you think about fertilizing, um, the thing to remember is you want to fertilize frequently but in small amounts. So since we are watering our containers pretty frequently, the fertilizer is going to leach out the bottom of those drain holes. So um, remember that we like to do it pretty often, but just using a smaller dosage than we normally would. You can use an organic or an inorganic fertilizer. Organic are things such as a um, bone meal or a blood meal. They're often very high in nitrogen. Um, inorganic fertilizer is probably what you're more used to. It's something like a miracle Grow or um, things that you would buy at a, um, a hardware store. And you want to look for a um, ratio of a 3 to 1 to 2. So that means your nitrogen is going to be the biggest percentage and then 1% phosphorus to 2% um, potassium. So you want something pretty high in nitrogen. We usually recommend around an 8 to 20% um, composition of nitrogen because that's going to give you the best blooms. So a lot of times in our containers we have a lot of annuals. Um, and they're going to bloom on new growth. So if you have a lot of nitrogen in your containers when you're fertilizing, you'll get really big, beautiful blooms and a lot of new growth. Um, so when you're looking in the store for a perfect fertilizer, make sure that first number on the package is the biggest. Watering containers is also very important. There's lots of factors that go into how much you will need to water and how often. So there's no perfect schedule. Uh, some of those factors include what your pot is made out of, plastic or ceramic. Some of those materials are porous and the water will drain out a lot more quickly. Also, make sure you're picking plants that have similar water needs so you can water the whole pot at the same time and not be worrying about babying certain plants. 
The key is watering deeply and infrequently instead of just giving a little splash here or there. The best way to check when you need to water is by doing a finger check by sticking your finger into the top few inches and if it's dry, it's time to water and make sure you water until you see water trickling out the bottom of the drainage holes. And also remember whether it's watering container gardens or anywhere in your landscape, the best time to water is in the morning because it reduces evaporation. Uh, there will be lower temper temperatures during the day and the wind hasn't reached high speeds yet, so the water won't uh, evaporate as quickly. And one last tip is if you want to water as efficiently as possible, use either a saucer under the pot to make sure it's collecting the excess that drains out, or uh, consider doing drip irrigation. So now that your plants are growing and your pot is looking beautiful, there's a little bit of maintenance that you might have to do. So the first thing we often think about is deadheading, which is nobody's favorite task, but it, it really will help your plants grow and bloom beautifully. So deadheading means you're going to pick off the old blooms that have um, been spent and dried up off of the annuals. So this will actually produce um, new buds on your flowers and it really is a helpful way to make big bushier plants. Um, you might also need to prune some plants if they become too leggy in the sun and start to look bad. It really helps to prune them back. Um, don't be afraid to cut back your plants because it really will make them look bushier and more beautiful. If you have any dead or diseased material, go ahead and groom that out. Um, and then if, also if any of your plants are looking a little um, worn down, you can even just replace them out of your pot. We'll talk about this a little bit later on, but for seasonal changes, you can completely rip out um, an annual out of your pot and change it with something that will do better um, in the new season's temperatures. And lastly, if your pot is a little bit in shade, you can go ahead and rotate it so that all of your annuals are gonna receive equal amounts of sunlight. Environmental conditions are also something that you should take note of. Uh, something in horticulture that we like to say a lot is putting the right plant in the right place. If you pick a plant that won't do well in a certain environment, it there's nothing you can do, it just isn't going to do well. So some of those factors to remember are the amount of access your plants will have to direct sunlight. Full sun plants mean that they need at least six hours or more of direct sunlight. Partial sun needs four to six hours. Partial shade needs two to four hours. And full shade does not mean that a plant will survive in darkness. It just means that it needs some dappled sunlight. Remember, morning sun is less harsh than afternoon sun. Uh, and make sure you're balancing um, protecting your plants from high wind speeds that we get in Kansas, but also encouraging the avail availability for air circulation to prevent disease and pest buildup in your containers. We'll be back in a little bit to talk about some design ideas for pots and uh, we'll actually be meeting you out at the horticulture research or the research station here in Hayes. So we'll be back in just a second. Hi. We're looking for insurance. Oh, let's see who's free. Jerry? When insurance agents work for only one company, Michael. their options are simply limited. Everybody. But a trusted choice independent agent is free to shop many companies for a better deal. Free to do what's right for you. Let us shop for you. Contact Rogers & Associate to learn more. What a girl wants in her home kitchen. Ease of use, flexibility, fun, the latest kitchen design, Frigidaire Professional Real Stainless Steel for fewer finger smudges, a French door refrigerator, convection cooking, a quiet dishwasher. Have the staff at Genuine Appliance in Hayes demonstrate new Frigidaire Professional Appliances to find what you want. Genuine Appliance at 1224 East 27th in Hayes. Everything a girl wants. Seems like the world is always changing. And like the weather in Kansas, change is inevitable. Mobile technology improves the lives of everyone, not just those living in a city. Next Tech Wireless is right there with you, providing expanded LTE coverage for everything from phones to farm equipment. We are devoted to help Kansas work smarter and live better. Next Tech Wireless, time for something different. Today, get four iPhones and unlimited data for less than $40 a line. 
Welcome back. We're here at the Ag Research Center in Hayes and we're going to do some fun container gardening today. So we're going to start out by talking about some design principles and there are a few principles which are kind of like rules but just remember to have fun and be creative when you're putting together your um, container garden. So a few things to remember is that you want to have a tall focal point. You also want to have some filler material and the last thing you want is some cascading leaves or blooms to spill over your plant. So in the horticulture industry, we like to call this a thriller, a filler, and a spiller. So those thriller plants, uh, those are often very dramatic and will be a bold concept that's drawing your eye in. They're upright in the main focal point. Some examples of plants that you'll use as a thriller are cannas, hibiscus and dracaena. So the next things are our fillers and these are often mounding plants and they're really going to fill out our pot. So feel free to use a bunch of these. Um, they should be about two-thirds the height of your um, main focal point. So not quite as tall but really fill out your pot. Some really good examples of these especially for fall are coleus, pintas, and ornamental peppers. Then lastly, your spiller plants. Those are what are going to draw the eye down to the ground, and they also provide variety and texture in your pot. Some examples of spiller plants are sweet potato vine, vinca vine, and the licorice plant. So when you're thinking about your design, some last things to consider are the color. So you don't want to just think about the color of the flowers, the blooms, but also the color of the foliage is really important. So if we look at the color wheel, you can have some harmonious designs and that will be colors right next to each other on the wheel, like orange, red, and yellow. Or you can have colors that will really pop and be contrasting. Um, so these would be opposite from each other on the wheel. Um, my favorite example of this is purple and yellow. So those are just a few things to remember when you're um, considering your design. Today we're going to do a really pretty fall design to show you. So this pot actually came from my office and this purple fountain grass has been in there since May. But the other plants were a petunia, a summer snapdragon, and some basil. And those all started looking very leggy and tired. So we brought in some new plants to change some stuff out. We've already put most of our potting media in here. And for our uh, focal point, we kind of positioned it to the back, but sometimes you can put it in the middle. Okay, so we're gonna start with our filler material. So for fall, a really great filler is mums. And they bloom during the fall, so it's really gonna bring out, um, really fill in the container and bring some great color. And we also paired it with these Coreopsis, mainly because this pretty bronze color matches the center um, of these bright yellows. So we'll go ahead and pop one of these mums in. And what's also kind of fun is these came with two pots, so we can save this other container for another use later. Let me do the mum. Yeah. When you're taking plants out of the pot, just gently press around the bottom and then pull it upside down. If your roots are a little bit pot bound like this one is, you can go ahead and tease them, break them apart a little bit so they'll really take off and thrive in the new container. And you also, when you're at the garden center, want to consider popping the plant out and check the health of the roots. That's a really good sign of telling if you have a nice plant to bring home. You want big, healthy, white roots. If they're brown and kind of slimy, don't buy that plant. You just want to make sure um, the whole root ball is being surrounded by new growing media so they can expand. If there's any gaps, the plant will just stay the way it was in the original pot. Okay, and do you want to do that? Then we also picked a couple different materials that you could use as a spiller. So this plant is called moneywort and it looks really good as a spiller. It's going to have your eye kind of go down to the ground so you'll start up here at the focal point and go all the way down. But you can also use plants like English ivy, sweet potato vines, anything that will spill out of the pot. Mm -hmm. 
Again, just tickling those roots so they'll break out and expand into the new pot. We might need a little under there. And if you get done planting and step back and it doesn't look super balanced, you can always just kind of move it around as you're going. It's not a permanent thing. We good? Yeah, all right. And a few other plants you can use, um, some ornamental cabbage like we talked about earlier is really great um, for the filler material. Um, also pansies do really well um, in the cool season temperatures. So just again, real quick run over. This was our thriller, which is purple fountain grass. We have two fillers, our mom and coreopsis, and then a spiller right here. Um, and our pot that we picked out was a plastic, so we'll need to check the moisture of it. And right now we're gonna go ahead and water it in, but um, we'll meet you back in the studio to talk about some seasonal interest ideas. Technology changes every day. Whether you want to keep up with the latest technology or master the gadgets you've already got, Next Tech University is here for you. Our experts will help you navigate the technology world. From business cloud computing to the iCloud, computer security, software, smartphones, and even must-have geek gifts, Next Tech's experts will share useful tips, tricks, and more to help with today's technology and keep you up to date on the hottest trends. Tune in to Next Tech University or Next Tech Local One, YouTube, and Next Tech On Demand. Storage Solutions is invested in complete customer satisfaction. You can choose a drive-up unit or a climate-controlled unit. Plus, you can choose from storage units of all sizes to fit your inventory. And that's not all. They'll sign for your packages and deliver and unload them into your unit. Storage Solutions has been named in the top 100 U-Haul dealers six times. Rent a pickup, cargo van, or a moving truck to keep your goods on the go. Remember, making moving and storing easy is Storage Solutions in Hayes and Victoria. Your home's exterior is the best defense against harsh weather conditions. With insulated vinyl siding, energy efficient windows, spray foam insulation, and metal roofing from AquaShield Roofing and Construction, you can protect your home from howling winds and ice cold temperatures. Don't let Mother Nature interfere with the comfort of your home. Call or visit us online today for a free estimate. AquaShield Roofing and Construction. Our team is dedicated to your complete satisfaction. Welcome back. We're again, this is container gardening for every season. We're going to discuss some plant material options with you and also share some seasonal interest ideas. So when you're choosing plants, you want to choose plants that will survive in Kansas, which can be hard. So K-State <laughs> actually has a couple of lists to pick from that are research based. So you know that plants will thrive. Uh, the two lists are called Prairie Star and Prairie Bloom. Prairie Star covers annual plants and Prairie Bloom covers perennials. And when you're looking at these lists, you just want to make sure that you're checking the cultivar name to make sure you're getting the exact plant that we approved. Uh, these lists are available online through K-State Research and Extension's bookstore, or you can also check in with your local extension office and they'll print, print you off a copy. Okay, so now we're going to talk a little bit about gardening for every season. So we're going to start with fall, and fall is such a fun time to really um, put some containers out in front of your house and use some really warm colors, um, oranges, and really great time to decorate. So your summer containers can easily, easily be freshened up and transitioned into a fall design. So you can incorporate some cool season plants that will last well into the fall months. Um, these are things such as cabbage and kale, mums, asters, verbena, and even sweet potato vine. Um, and then you can use some fun accents. You can use things um, that you might find out in nature. You can use some seed pods to really create a, this could be used as your thriller in your arrangement. Um, some milkweed pods that have dried, these could really create some of that filler in your container and be decorative. And lastly, it's really fun to decorate with a lot of the things we have available in fall, like gourds and pumpkins. So these will really bring in some of those warm fall tones, um, and they're really fun to set around your containers. 
from fall we move into winter and it might be an interesting concept to you that you could have things in your containers during winter time. You just want to be aware of what type of container you have. If you have terracotta or clay, you want to make sure to move those in because the freeze and thaw cycle that your container will go through will cause them to crack. Uh, when you're picking plant material to put in your pots at winter time, you want to check out the USDA hardiness zone map. This will tell you what temperature your plants can survive to the coldest temperature. Most of Kansas is zone five and six. To ensure that your plants will survive, it's good to even go up a couple levels and have a little bit of a buffer. Some plants that you can use at winter time are things like evergreen shrubs or those kale and cabbage that you had in your fall container. You could also be really creative and use some trimmings from your Christmas tree that are left over or go to your florist and grab some live greenery such as magnolia branches or holly with some pretty red berries. You could also use birch branches or dogwood branches. Dogwood has a really pretty orangish red color to it. And also be fun and creative with your ideas. You could use some Christmas lights or ornaments. We also have a couple of props. If you don't have holly berries, you could use something like this or there's pine cones all over the place. So feel free to use those even as like a top dressing or a mulch in your containers. Okay, as we move into spring, you can really start to plant your containers earlier than you might think. You can start them in March to April. Um, just know that during this time, the, the temperatures will be cooler. So you may wanna pack your containers a little bit fuller because plants will grow at a slower rate. Um, you can use plants like um, with bright colors like ivy, pansies, willow branches. Um, the shrubs and trees that are flowering are really fun to clip some branches off of there and use them as kind of your thriller aspect to your container. So branches such as forsythia and quince are really interesting to add into a container. Um, you can also incorporate things such as um, pinwheels and fun summery um, spring things to um, add some fun and whimsical aspects. So summer containers uh, is what you're normally used to putting out. Uh, you'll want to be aware that this is the most active time for your plants to be growing. So the plants will need the most water and the most fertilizer during this time. But just know if you had some plants from the springtime that turned out to be a dud, don't be afraid to swap something out. It's a trial and error process. Learning from mistakes can be really fun and you can try out some different plant material. There are lots of plants that are drought tolerant and heat loving that will do well in Kansas over the summer. And uh, this will be a time where you can use some things like flags for the 4th of July um, <laughs> across your porch. Uh, and some examples of plant material that you could use during the summer could even be vegetables or herbs, as well as some succulents or evergreens and vines. Okay, as we wrap up, we wanted to go over our top five tips from this presentation. Um, so some things to remember is that you can be creative when you choose your pot, but just remember it needs to have some drainage holes. Um, don't use soil that you dig up from your garden. Use a soilless mix and make sure you're checking your water level daily. You want to fertilize frequently, but in low dosages. Um, when you're designing your container, Remember our fun little trick of thrillers, fillers, and spillers. And lastly, when you're out plant shopping at a greenhouse or garden center, use those Prairie Star recommended lists from K-State. All of the information that we've used today has come from different publications that K-State Research and Extension provides. The first is called Watering Containers and House Plants. And the second is growing flowers in pots. Those can be found online through the K-State Research and Extension bookstore or can be collected at one of your uh, local extension offices. Again, don't forget the Prairie Star and Prairie Bloom plant list to help you pick out what can be in your containers. Thanks again for joining us today uh, during our talk on container gardening for every season. 
Again, my name was Paula Schnitker. I'm the horticulture extension agent for Trigo, Gove, and Logan counties. And again, my name is Cassie Homan. I'm the horticulture agent for the Post Rock District. Thanks, Thanks. for joining us.